From the time I came to LMU to join the English department as an assistant professor in 1976, Sister Frances, with her impressive doctorate from Stanford, had preceded me by a few years. In fact, she was already a presence on the campus by the time of the 1973 merger between Marymount College and Loyola University. So Sister Frances was one of those who welcomed me and helped me to feel at home when I arrived on the third floor of Holy Hall. It was an era when junior professors were not handled with kid gloves, <laughs> as I believe they are nowadays. <laughs> we were immediately thrown into the thick of things with heavy teaching loads, including two sections of freshman comp classes. I admired the equanimity, the aplomb, the seemingly unflappable demeanor with which Sister Frances handled everything. I admire her quiet ways with students and the respect that they have for her. And with it all, and over the years, I admire the fact that Frances found time for her own scholarship and writing. Of all the courses Frances taught, I most remember her work with the Chaucer's Canterbury Tales. I recall how in the late 70s and early 80s, Frances would prepare her students to participate as would-be Canterbury pilgrims in the campus Renaissance Fair of those days. It was quite an event. It occurs to me now, looking back, that Frances would have made a good model for a number of the delicate traits Chaucer attributes to the Prioress <laughs> in the prologue's character sketch of the gentle nun. I'm thinking of Sister Frances not simply as a colleague in the English department, but also as a dedicated religious. I cannot forget her love of the Eucharist and her efforts on behalf of the sisters at Levy Centers to recruit Jesuit presiders for a late afternoon mass in Levy Chapel. Francis loved that chapel and gently but firmly resisted any efforts to introduce changes in its arrangement. After Francis had retired from the English department, she moved with the other RSHMs remaining on campus to a house on Alabama Street, where she sometimes invited to celebrate the Eucharist. It was also at this time that Francis worked for several years with Father Randy Roach as assistant director of the Center for Nation Spirituality. Eventually, age and health issues caught up with Sister Francis, and she was able to relocate at the Regina Center on the campus the sisters of St. Orange at their mother house in Orange. Her thoughtfulness continued to be reflected in the cards I received every Christmas and every birthday. Last January, Father Roach and I, together with Sister Mary Janino, visited Francis at the Regina Center. We met in the dining room where Francis, of course, offered us tea and cookies. Her hearing was not what it used to be, but she was as spry as ever. Certainly not confined to a rocking chair, much less a wheelchair. She insisted on taking us on a grand tour, inside and outside, of every nook and cranny of the retirement center. I was exhausted, <laughs> but happy to see Francis so well situated including with her own thoroughly equipped and characteristically neat computer desk. I'm glad Randy and I were able to have that final visit with Francis. Thinking back on that day and all the years I knew Sister Francis, let me conclude with this slightly paraphrased, but I think apt quotation from Chaucer's description another memorable nun. 
I want to jump a little language. <laughs> Certainly, she was of great good cheer, full, pleasant, and of amiable mien. God rest, Sister Frances.